Hi guys, hope you're all good. Uh, today I got Matt here from Kenzai, and we're just going to talk uh, a little bit about what they've been up to, uh, general guitar stuff, um, and just all the good stuff. So, yeah, cheers man. for coming, man. Oh man, how's it going? Yeah, good, man. I'd say a long time though, see, but I caught your blood stuff, which yeah, is always, that was it, always like, a good thing, man. But it's been a little bit of a while since we yeah had a proper catch up, man. Yeah, it's been a few months. So how was blood stuff, man? Let's start there. Insane and very hot, very sweaty. Yeah? Yeah. I got so sunburned, it's unreal. Because you know me, I do not tan, I burn. Yeah. So yeah. that's how that went down. Yep. But uh, yeah, as usual, blood socks are intense weekend of nothing but brutalness and awesomeness. You're there all and weekend. Right, you were there with a couple of the other guys as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously we, uh, we played the Sunday uh, New Blood because uh, we won the Birmingham Metal to the Masses. Yes. Uh, you know, hosted by, you know, the Capture Arcs lot and uh, absolutely fucking phenomenal, phenomenal Masses events. Cool. Um, it's so much better run than previous ones that I've been in. Not knocking those guys, but the way that these guys have done it is... Definitely, man. Is, yeah, so any future bands that are looking to do that, uh, I know a couple. Yeah. Um, but, like, I've said, look, definitely go for it. Because it's, it's, it's really good for, like, networking and just trial by fire definitely make man. yourself better and I think yeah Metal to the Masses <coughs> especially is cool because it gives promoters that don't necessarily have access to bigger opportunities like Bloodstock and for them it's also a learning curve so like yeah the guys that have been doing it year upon year they're sort of learning and building with it and sort of with Bloodstock I know yeah a lot of the guys at Bloodstock in the in the crew in the organisation they have a lot of input and try and help these venues yeah. and promoters and stuff out so yeah, it's a learning curve for everyone, but it's, it's wicked that you had a, a good experience. And yeah, it's a really good platform for, for newer bands to sort of jump onto something a oh, lot yeah. bigger. For sure. I mean, we, it's quite uh, really beneficial with the Birmingham one because Caps Rocks are, they are promoters. Okay. So they've done it and they, they do other festivals right. and stuff like that and they put on their own. And so they've got experience in that field already and they just knocked it out of the park. Okay. It was completely night and day. I cannot stress it enough. Nice. Four masses and the last two have been stellar. Yeah. I'd recommend anyone to go for it. Yeah, that's Even it. if you're going to get, you know, you're not going to get through or whatever it is, just, you know, like I've said to people, don't, we didn't get through twice on Bounce. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. People get so invested, they get their feelings hurt and it's not about that. It's, I wouldn't look at, as much as it's hailed as a competition, to me, it's more of a showcase of, you get to the final, the bands on the final, they're the best bands in the local area. They're the guys that you want to gig with. Yeah. So they're the ones that you want to make friends with and do shows with locally and all that kind of stuff. And um, that's what we plan on doing anyway. Yeah, definitely. So. And it is a showcase, man. <clears throat> yeah, from the metal to the masses, heats themselves. Yeah, showcasing the, the most of the local talent. And then, you know, the bands that go on to play Bloodstock, you know, that is, again, another big showcase for rock and metal fans from the UK and way beyond to come and see you know, yep. new talent and... And yeah, everybody's excited to, to find the next big thing sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's a really good opportunity for everyone involved. It is much more than just a competition to play a festival. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really good opportunity on any level. But um, I mean, what were some of the things that you'd, yeah, for maybe some of the other bands looking at doing Metal to Masses, what, what do you reckon is important for, for a band to win through Metal to Masses and go on and play Bloodstock? it's a multifaceted approach I suppose it's obviously professionalism is always key at top of the list you know you, you be respectful um, to everyone that's there you know yeah. uh, you work like they have a stage manager they have people that are recording you obviously you've got um, the organisers themselves work with those people play well with others that's big key things because I don't know about you but we've noticed with some of the especially in the local scene there is almost like a competition mentality, even when there's not a competition going on. It's like, oh, you're yeah. in another local metal band, you're my sworn enemy. It's like, no, it doesn't work like that because mm. it's not how you're going to progress further. Yeah. If, if I mean, the, 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 attitudes and egos play a big thing in it, but I mean, we're moving all that to the side, but like, it's just put that, leave that at the door. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously you perform your best, yeah. but you can have a bad day. Absolutely. Like, uh, oh, I'm not going to lie, with, man. We've all had bad days. Any event, yeah, it comes down to, what happens on the night and sometimes it just doesn't play in your favor for a whole multitude of reasons yep. and sometimes it's just no it's not happening yep. yeah been there. so yeah 
it's sometimes it really sucks. I have seen that happen quite a few times for a lot of bands, and I'm like, I feel for you, man. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? I've been yeah. there myself. Like, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was one of the, I, th- I think it was last year's Metal to the Masses, there was like a thunderstorm and a band had their set cut, cut by 20 minutes. Yeah. Like, phew, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that's an act, that's an act of God. Yeah. How I mean, are you supposed to prep against that? Exactly. I mean, yeah. like, you know, returning back to the, the question, obviously, it's like, be prepared as possible. Even against acts of God, I suppose, yeah. is one of them. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's uh, be well practiced uh, as much as you can. But we have, we all have day jobs and lives, yeah, that's that, it. you know, most adults do. Um, so it's like, you know, you just don't be nervous. Be happy that you're actually, especially if you get to a final or even semi-final, like it's a testament that you're one of the, within that competition, one of the more voted for sought after bands that yeah. can pull people in, that kind of thing. Cause I, <laughs> I think nerves are good though, man. Cause yeah. nerves, nerves shows that adrenaline's good. Yeah. Nervousness isn't in my experience, uh, but if people conflate the two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's the kind of nerves where you're actually losing your shit here and things are falling apart now. And then there's the nerves where you're like, Oh, there's the whole, ready. Yeah, like, for me, it's more like before shows and even now man uh, big shows big crowds you get butterflies before that that last five minutes before stage time oh yes is the longest five minutes you have ever seen in yep. your life i experienced and that it is. just doesn't end and then as soon as that starts whoa yeah time just fucking a yep. thousand time miles an hour yeah before you know it, you're like, playing your last track yeah 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 you, that's exactly what it was like at bloodstock backstage yeah. and there's a lot of organization and being prepared beforehand so much that goes into sometimes just doing a 30 minute set or a 45 or a, you know, for a headline band an hour and a half. And it's just, yeah, so much organization and beforehand stuff for such a short event. Do yeah. You know what I mean? It's, for it's 30 minutes of magic. Yeah. You've got to, <laughs> you've got to be able to like hold your nerves. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but being nervous is, is wicked. I think. Yeah. It shows that you still care. It means oh, something yeah. to you, do you know what I mean? I mean, uh, typically, I mean, because we've spoke about this, I mean, we've known each other now for um, 10 Way years. Way too long. long. Yeah. Very long time. I'm going grey um, now, Alec. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm, I'm the old grey hair, as yeah. my friends like to point out to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, um, like, because I remember saying to you, because you were like, oh, you still get nervous. I'm like, no, not really. Yeah. Because it's, I think I've managed to be able to differentiate between nerves and adrenaline yeah like rather than being scared yeah and feeling unprepared on to go on stage it's more of a case of like no i'm as best as i can possibly be today yeah and i want to get up there and perform and i want to put on a good show but you can have it like mid mid performance like you could be five minutes in to the the actual set list and if you've hit like a couple of bun notes even though it really doesn't matter yeah right really because it's all about the performance not the individual yeah. it's about the whole the act that you can have that little knock and you go, damn, and it's that sinking feeling. And I've, yeah. um, I did have that, I think it was like the second track at Bloodstock. Right. So we bust out Lucid was the second one. It was like one of our early singles. And um, like I said, um, my uh, monitor mix was like so loud of me that I couldn't hear the drums. And I was there, right. like, I can hear every finger movement on like the G and D yeah. string. Like it was just like, I was there like, I'm not used to being this loud. And that's something. Can we just take a moment? A guitarist saying a guitar is too loud. Yeah. So that um, is impressive. Rob or Ron, I can't remember his name. I do apologize. Um, the monitor guy for the blood, the, the new blood stage at Bloodstock. Um, like I just turned around and said, it was like, got to the first break, which is I said after our second song. And I was like, can you please turn me down? And then someone was like, I bet that's the first time he's ever heard a guitarist turn around and yeah. say, yeah, I'm too loud. Turn me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I can't hear the drums, yeah, absolutely. Well, I could hear the drums you know, or else I'm completely out of time. But yeah. I like to have a, a more even it's balance. Balanced, yeah, yeah exactly. And with with festivals, yeah, it's festival patches and changeovers are like absolute chaos. In yeah. <laughs> seven and a half minutes each band, so there's yeah. only a fifteen minute turnover. You think a, a, a yeah half hour, forty five minute set is chaos? You should see a oh, twenty yes. minute changeover, and it's like whoa. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you now, the 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 stage teams, especially the Nubler guys, what with Bird, um, Jay. Uh, I, I believe his name is Rob. I'm going to say it's Rob. He's probably going to see this and be like, prick, that's not my name. Um, I apologise if it isn't. But they were so on it. Yeah. Like, phenomenal. Um, uh, Jay's a funny dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
he likes to throw curveballs at Bird every now and then with just like random comments. And she's yeah, like all yeah, business. Yeah. When she's like, this is, okay, so this is it. Stage manager, boom, bang, 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 bang. This is what you need to do. Uh, this is where you're going to be. There's the toilets. There's the drinks. Like, yeah. whatever. This is everything you need. We can get you whatever. Here's, you know, Animal, Animal's the drum tech. He was awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm pretty sure you've met Animal. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a good At this point, was, I've... Matt, our Luke loved him. Yeah. So I was there like, you've got the best dude for you as a drum tech. It's really good seeing really good crew. Yes. They know what they're on about. So Matt. switched on. They've got a brilliant crew. Yeah. And the same on, on the Sophie stage yeah, with the bands that I was working with. It was like flawless and really well organized. I mean, I've Shit never had together. the privilege to meet the crew at Sophie stage, yeah. but Bloodstock, if you need a, yeah, holler. There you go. We're up for it. We are down. <laughs> like, yeah. um, we've got plans to keep moving forward. Good. Um, but yeah, like I, I could not knock the stage crew in any sense, shape or form. Yeah. Like even way back when, but like this year's, it was just like, the, it was, it wasn't, I believe when I played in 2015 to 2024, it's, it, there was a, it was a different setup, different layout, different stage. Yeah. Right. Different crew. Yeah. And the crew I thought was good back in 2015. Yeah. But Bird's team, Honest to God, mate, blew it out the damn park. Yeah, they're good, man. They yeah, are phenomenal. I've, I've done a few other events with a lot of them. Um, it's those guys and the other crew that come to mind. Uh, up in Scotland, in Glasgow, you've got what's called the Mad Crew. Oh, okay. And these guys are like animals, like 50 of them. They're and all they Scottish. are. Yeah, yeah, and they are <laughs> so fucking good, man. Listen, mate, some of the Scots are just the best people ever. Like we End did, uh, we did Barrowlands on the Saxon run, which is like this big old warehouse on like the third floor or something. Oh. Sold out show, and like the venue wasn't big enough for us to bring our whole production in, so there was a lot of it just sat around. But the loadout is like actually you know about twelve flights of massive concrete stairs. <laughs> And they've basically got a big pulley system in the middle that they're constantly lowering and bringing stuff up with chains and all this shit. And then like 50 guys all just handballing consoles, PAs, light ends, pyros, staging, drums, backline. And it was just like, whoa. I saw, I don't know, 20 cases go from a massive pile to in the back of the van in like 10 minutes. And I was like, those guys... Their backs are going to hurt. Yeah, but you know what? It, something like that really makes or breaks for a band. You know? oh, if, yeah. if the crew is not switched on and you know, things are slow and you're running out of time with things, then yeah, a decent crew can really make or break that show. Yep. Like, do you know what I mean? And, and, and you know anyway, uh, it, like my old bands that you've worked with and even with this current one, um, I've always strived to try and be as fast as possible getting on and off stage. Yeah. Um, simplify the setup, get it on, get it all up. I mean, to be fair, it was. I, I think I'm so used to it now with my own setup. It's just a case of like, quick, 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 quick. Even though I'm adding stuff to it now, like, I, I, yeah. if I'm bringing like an ad- additional like boost pedal or whatever, which normally I never ever run when yeah. you ever see me with pedals. Oh, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. True. You know me as yeah. the plug and play guy. As long as I've got a good tone in the camper, that's all I cared about. The only one I remember you having was the Line Six. Pause like way back in the day, man. Oh, and that was when I was yeah, but I only used that as a MIDI controller. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I still got my Boss GT8 somewhere, which I do exactly the same yeah. with. Like, cool, still alive. Because yeah, it was you who told me about how to do MIDI controls. Yeah, which obviously, like, because like we've learned, ooh, Jesus, we've known each other for a long time now. It's a case of like, a lot of the learning that I did was up here. Yeah, well, we like, did a lot of it together, man. Yeah, a lot yeah, of my early years was with you guys. You were my first proper metal band, and. Yeah, that led on to other things, obviously. Oh, yeah, because I kept telling everybody, go record with Jay, go record with Jay. Yeah. And it was like metal bands and I was there just like, this poor bastard, man, he's not yeah. used to metal bands. But you know what, man, it, <laughs> it taught me a lot. Yeah, I've never been, and quite openly admitted, I've never been like a through and through metal guy. No, no. Yeah, I'm always a sucker for my rock stuff. And yeah, but I think now I'm getting older and I've sort of worked quite a lot in every aspect. I've done a lot of metal, I've done a lot of rock done a lot of bluesy stuff yeah. from the smaller bands right through to massive bands and so obscure like, African bands don't get me started on yeah. those we don't talk <laughs> okay, about those but <laughs> yeah. you've done you've done a broad range of stuff man yeah yeah no I have and uh, it was stuff like that that and a few other projects that was the reason why I took down the studio website is because I was getting so many random out there 
people trying to do this stuff and these projects are an absolute nightmare every time every 100 percent success rate or fail rate whatever you want to call it so i was like right from now on i just want my name out there and it will only be associated with bands and music and yep. stuff that i like to do like i mean you know us I mean? musicians don't make it easy for tech people no and as a guitar well i say as a guitar tech myself i've never been on tour obviously but like the stuff the work that we do at home with all the setups and stuff, it's the um, the the lack of knowledge that musicians will have, and then obviously they come to people to yeah. fix their stuff. Yeah, um, as you know, yeah, is a headache sometimes. I think yeah, bands and musicians in general, like it's it's a hard journey from day one. Really, it's woodshedding. It is. You're you're constantly trying to you know fight against the grain and knowledge and you know working with the right people and doing the right things and being in the right places and knowing the right people that takes some real blood sweat tears and many gray hairs down the line yeah and so, you have to have your tempers in check yeah man yeah because I, I think we've seen a lot yeah yeah and it's normal man because yeah. i think um yeah we've had this where it's like because you don't experience it and you don't really know how to take it yeah, the automatic thing is rah, meltdown. Fuck, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and completely. Oh man, you've it. seen me with my fair share. Yeah, when man, I was a young man. Yeah, we've all done <laughs> it over the years. Yeah, <laughs> you've yeah. had it where you've lost your temper. I mean, mostly. I mean, we were. Oh, how long was I living up here with you? Oh man, so well, <laughs> like, like, nearly yeah, a year. Yeah. Like yeah. man, we had. I think we had shared meltdowns and then individual meltdowns and yeah, then meltdowns absolutely. at each other. <laughs> see, see the ones that Luke has, man. Luke, wow, man. When that guy gets angry, that guy is angry. I have man. never seen that guy talk above a forty decibel level. No, I've he never doesn't. seen him lose his shit. He doesn't do that. Like he, he's, he's probably yeah. The only time I've seen him pissed off is when I had a bad review ages back oh, in the day wow. for one of my mixes. Okay. It was literally one bad review for this whole release. But Luke looks like, ah, oh, fuck this guy. Fuck him. What the fuck does he know? I'm like, dude, calm down, man. It doesn't mean it's shit. It's just an opinion. Yeah. It, like, it really doesn't matter. It's That's it. first. And we all get him. Like, do you know what I mean? That's it. I mean, this why when That's I give my now. opinion on stuff, like I said earlier, my opinion is my opinion. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't really... even read reviews for my work anymore, to be fair. Unless it's... Yeah, it's someone that's reached out and you know, give me a, or I reach out to yeah, you know, some of my peers and yeah, you know, that that is what holds value for me. But yeah, you know, the Joe public, whatever, cool, enjoy it or don't. I hope you do, but I don't care if you don't. Sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, no it, it's, it's nice when it's positive. Um, yeah. it's it's best to ignore it if it's negative. If it's not really on point. Yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Or take it, take things with a pinch of salt. Absolutely. Because even positive ones, people can blow smoke up your ass. Criticism is always good. Yeah. And without criticism, you don't learn, you don't expand, and you don't improve anywhere. It becomes stale. That's yeah. it. But criticism it's always and knowledge. Constructive as much as possible. Yeah. The problem is, like like we said, you can try and give constructive criticism and someone will, for some reason, take that as a fuck you. Yeah. And it's not meant to be that way. And the problem yeah. is, I'm the guy that will say something bluntly. Yeah. Um... And I'll be honest. Yep. Um, again, it's just my opinion. But if it's being, if I'm being objective and I'm saying yeah. this is yeah, like yeah. whatever an issue or it's not me saying I don't think this works. It's a case of like factually. Okay, so this isn't in time. Right. Why is it not in time? Is it because you're not doing yeah. X, Y, Z or whatever? Yeah. If I'm speaking factually and then they're like, oh, well, you you saying I can't play? I'm not saying that. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's like we've all had it. We've all experienced it. We've all done it ourselves. Yeah. And it's just a case of like, yeah, keep, it's good to be ego checked. Yeah. yeah as much as it sucks. Yeah. But it's good to be ego checked. Um, I think some of the most biggest ego check moments I think we had was when it was like trying to record a guitar part thinking, yeah, I nailed that. And you're like, yeah, you want to listen to that back? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They're like, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. You know what? I've had that with mixes. Where it's oh, like, really? Yeah. Where like I've, your own stuff? Like, as in um, your, your own mixes? 100%, like, man. And you're there like, shit, that was like, bad. Like a musician, producing, mixing, is an art form. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It is a creative process. And, and you find your own. Yeah. Yeah. And it took me a long time to actually, A, accept that a mixing engineer has a sound. Yeah, f- f- to start off with, I was quite... <laughs> Andy Sneap. Yeah, just do what the band wants, that sort. And then when it's a case of, well, actually, 
you're never really doing 100% what the band wants because it's you doing it. Yeah. You're having your judgment on it. And you're um, a professional that you know certain tricks that they don't and what things work. Yeah. But also, what works for you. Yeah. What works for me might not necessarily work for someone else. Raz is a really good example. He's a mixer. He's a producer. Same as me. And sometimes we are like as far apart as we can get. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, he's very technical. I'm very... Wow. <laughs> yeah, same as I've always been. I'm a creative guy. I like to get it all out. Let's go. Yeah, let's smash it out. And Raz is very like, got to focus, got to make sure Clinical. everything's very, it's hundred percent right all the time. Clinical. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to talk to Raz about all yeah, sorts man. of different shit, man. Well, we might have to do like a joint one. We'll get Raz. Oh, down, well, man. man. Whenever. But, I mean, the thing is, dude. Uh, yeah, I think for a new band and new musicians, it, it simply comes down to not giving up. No, start, straight up. It's easy, you know, to it's have criticism. To and if it's against you and you haven't really had that criticism before, to be like, fuck off, fuck you, meh, you know, if it's personal. But really, the only thing that matters is the music and yeah. what you guys are doing. And sometimes the first thing that you do isn't isn't the best thing that can oh, hell be no. done. Do you know what I mean? Um, Often it's not. Testament to that. I mean, well, uh, Straight for Sun were sat where you were last night and um, they were saying one of their singles, they've had like nine, ten different versions where they're like swapping song parts okay. out and whatever. And it's quite normal. I have it on some of my productions. It's not every track and it's, yeah, it's certainly not with every band, but sometimes you are literally taking major chunks out and adding new chunks or yep. swapping things around. And that's quite a natural process but being able to take what other people have on board especially in the early years yeah you've it's got often to trust not someone. seen yeah absolutely i've seen a lot of bands crumble because they don't know how to deal with this sort of situation and differences of opinion yeah absolutely like creative differences like okay so with kensai yeah right it's there's okay there's the five dudes right we're not all going to be on the same page mm-hmm. right so we've got a rock drummer a punk bass player. Okay. Right. Ian is one of the more melodic guitarists. That one I've of the happiest with. guys in the world. One of the happiest dudes <laughs> ever. Well, yeah. Never uh, forget uh, Ian. I mean, we fucking, we love Ian. Yeah. Uh, he's lovingly nicknamed Dad in the band because obviously he's, <laughs> I, like I think that. he's, he, I think Ian's uh, early 40s, like 42. I'm the second youngest member being 32. Okay. So there's 10 years between me and Ian. Yeah. But I've followed Ian since I was 16 with his other bands and I've, I've loved it. Oh, you know, I've always appreciated the work that he's done. And the bands that he's been in, like I've been a fan of his. Yeah. So when he auditioned, I was there like, it's sound. You know? And he's always been, at least as far back as I remember him being on the scene, he's always been a very recognisable person, yeah. a very humble person. Uh, he's one of the most very enthusiastic lovable. people I've yeah. met. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. been a majorly like welcome yeah. addition to the band, obviously, since because he replaced Reese. Uh, which for me, obviously, Reese leaving sucked because he's been my guitarist for 14 years. Um, we up like... Even, Ian even turn around and recognise that because uh, you know the technique obviously we're recording where it's one guitarist does like all the rhythm parts yeah I mean yeah well the thing is during the Kensei early years and stuff me and Reese actually developed to the point where we can record individually on the same track and it's the same yeah because it's 14 years oh, I was teaching him when he was 15 it, it's, it's a big thing to lose like even Ian said he goes there was something different that went on there because there's two tracks um, uh, that one's yet to be released no doubt you we haven't got a date for that yet but um, I believe you know what off the top of my head I can't remember I'm not going to sit here okay. for like 20 minutes trying to remember it but <laughs> there's two tracks where me and Reese are both playing on it okay. because we didn't have time to learn the other guitarist parts to put it down to keep it but the thing is it's like the producer was there it's like this sounds like one guitarist it's because me and Reese were that locked in with each other that's pretty cool yeah and I was just like Probably never going to have that again, which is fine. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. Because yeah. Because what Ian's bringing in, he's like the amateur dramatics guitarist of metalheads. Yeah, like he's he the most, I've never met a dude that made me look lazy on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and he makes me look lazy on stage, man. <coughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's a character. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said, um, he, 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 yeah, he really is. Um, yeah, like I said, lovingly nicknamed Dad, and I lovingly nicknamed him Uncle Creepy because I think it's funny. <laughs> or um, Doctor, or was it Doctor Robotnik? Like, because mm. <laughs> Doctor Eggman or whatever it is. But um, um, no, Ian's like, oh, I love the dude to pieces, and obviously I've been a fan, for, a fan of his for years. So it's cool as hell having him in the band. Um, but he's like more of like a melodic guitarist, and then me, it's there's more dissonance. 
So we're both like the two metal guitarists, punk bass player, rock drummer, and then an emo vocalist. Right, that's okay. the way we put down Dave. But Dave doesn't sing all that often. He just shouts and screams down a microphone. But cool. his like favourite band is like him and Prince. Right, so dude, right, yeah. so it, there's like quite a a very broad um, spectrum of like playing ability, um, influences, um, perspectives, all that within Kensei itself, and. Obviously, me being like one of the primary writers for the band, because I will sculpt like eighty percent of the track. Right, but it's got to go through everyone's individual filter. Yeah, I'm not going to write a bassline that's a tech bassline or whatever, and then give it to a punk bassist and expect him to be able to play it. I'm going to be yeah. like, right, can you do this? No, cool. What can you do on this? Like, use these notes, have a feel, fl- fl- you know, do your thing for this. It's same with Watton, but like I said before, me and Watton, uh, well, pro- off camera, I've said before. I've locked in with what now where I kind of know what he's going to write. Right. But I don't want to give him the drums and be like, that's what you're playing. I'm not that. Yeah. I don't want to do that. It's boring. I don't want to him because he's going to be playing in a covers band. Yeah. This is his band. Yeah. yeah, yeah you absolutely. know what I mean? It's his band. He needs to be able to feel like it's his fucking band. I'm not that guy who's going to be like, I'm in control. I'm not that guy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I have my opinions and I come across strongly. The lads know that. Um, Referred to as a necessary evil sometimes. Absolutely. But, um, uh, we've gone on a fucking tangent here. As per yeah, usual, well, with all of our conversations <laughs> ever. Start, but it's all good, man. Um, but yeah, so it's, but I, I, I take the opinions of, of the lads. Like, yeah. um, of what their input is and what they say. Ian's been a big help. Like Ian would turn around and say, he's, like, he doesn't write songs from start to finish. Right. He'll come up with riffs here and there. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, cool. I was like, you're, you're in this position. Move it down by like a whole step because now you're in C minor. And he's like, don't talk to me in theory. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, the same, man. I like, I like Ian. I love Ian. It's just the riff guy, isn't it? As yeah. a guitarist, I like playing cool riffs. Don't talk to me about theory. Yeah. It's like, I just want to rock out. Yeah. Dance around. And I'm right there with him, man. Yeah. Seven like, days a week. Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, but Ian's actually given me like a new perspective on writing. Yeah. Because I'm trying to. Being a fan of his previous work, I've looked at it and gone, how would Ian write a section? Yeah. But, so, I mean, obviously, Ian's only been with us for since February, so about six months. Yeah. So I'm still figuring out Ian. Absolutely. Like, I mean, on for a me, one-to-one basis. It was really cool to see because I'd worked with both your previous band and Ian's his previous, previous band. So to see those sort of unite in a way... Yeah. was like, okay, that's really cool. And when it happened, because, yeah, obviously I've known Reese as long as I've known you, and that was big boots to fill, absolutely, and hats off to that guy. Yep. So it's like, yeah, whoever you're going to get needs to really bring something else to the table. Yes. Do you know what I mean? See, you understand it. And Ian was like, okay, there's no better guy than that, to be honest. Right. Not that I know. Because it's, th- it's what I said to Ian, because... Obviously, I'd sent over all the material. We had 13 guitarists ask for the materials. Right. And only two were the ones that actually sent videos through going, this is what I've done, this is what I've learned. Yeah. Um, and I, so obviously, I, as being as helpful as I possibly could, so any issues that you have, any whatever, let me know. Mm. And we had to do like a, a, a bit of flip arounds because Reese was a, a really competent guitarist, incredibly competent guitarist. There were points where he was literally better than me for like six months, you guys, and I have to catch the fuck up with him. You guys very much grew up in guitar world together. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's forged in. Yeah, two I mean, peas in a pod. Absolutely, the arguments, yeah. disagreements, and then yeah. great times and bad times and everything together. We've gone through thick and thin, you know, and like you said, especially growing up in guitar world together. Um, Reese would listen to me when it comes to like a lot of things, especially because he was like 15 when I first got my hands on him and being like, yeah. right, I'm going to teach you how to write. Cause I used to watch him write and we deal with notation as well. Not just tab. Yeah. So we're working on, on like, you should be able to write riffs without actually having the guitar in your hands. Yeah. You should be able to look at and like the notation on a like, guitar pro, for example, Sibelius, whatever people use. It's like, you should be able to read the rhythm. We call it guitar pro heroes. <laughs> that's not. That's a separate conversation, that is, right? That, that is, is a separate term. conversation. That me, but, that, that and Voz invented that. So big up to Voz Bennett. Uh, right? No, so that's that's yeah. That's a guitar pro hero thing, was Voz yeah, man. Yeah. He invented that game. It's how he got me into Gojira. That's the short end of the story. Uh, on no, that no, that's that's what we call guitarists that 
because uh, there was a stage sort of early 2000s, mid 2000s, Probably where everyone was everybody on was on Guitar Pro. I was yeah. on Guitar Pro, man. That's sort of how you oh, learn so Guitar Pro shit. Heroes. So Guitar okay, Pro Heroes. Where you're from. Okay, yeah. I have a different perspective because of Vos. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No. Um, okay, yeah, Guitar Pro Heroes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, man, that's actually a really and good. And that's, that's lessons learned, man. I remember, you know, doing a lot of the early stuff where... Yeah, you guys are still on the tail end. I don't know if you still use a guitar pro. Oh, hell yeah. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> dude, I want to be able to write something down, yeah. leave it there, and then move on to the next riff if I have to. Everybody's on a door now, dude. They just record it. It's there. No, no, because <laughs> the thing is, I, like, I, I, I've developed my ear over yeah. years, but I still don't... I, I, okay, so I can play by ear, but it takes me much, much longer to uh, dissect material and figure it out than it is to read it on, like, even a musical score. So when you're playing, you're thinking more of a theory point rather than a musical point, if that makes sense. Is it theory that sort of drives you? Is that like your comfort when you're writing, especially? It was. Yeah? Okay, it was. So it, the thing that I said to... Okay, so when when early days with Reese with XVI, and obviously with Kensei, we, we, I, I changed up the form with Kensei and um, I hit a bit of resistance with Reese initially. Right. Right. Um, but it was a case of like, what we always said was, you use theory as a principle, not a rule. Yeah. So it's always lovely to have all notes in key and all that stuff, but then never use any accidentals and yeah. then never do key changes or right. whatever. It's like, it can get stale yeah. over time, especially over years. Yeah. Right. So the... <sighs> With the with the more new, with the newer stuff, it was like we were trying to, especially with the seven string stuff, which hasn't been released and right. has. There's some bits that have been worked on. Some of it's like Reese was going for a really, really melodic approach, like okay. big held chords and not as chaotic stuff. While I was doing more chaotic stuff on the seven, yeah. So it, there's, there was night and day when it comes to seven string writing. Okay, but six is there's a Reese got really atmospheric, like the light, for example, when we released the light. Um, there's a lot that went into that track. Right. And the guitars are very atmospheric, even though there's still like energy and chaos. It's not just laid back with atmosphere. <sighs> but I, I don't, it's hard. To, it's hard. I, I, I don't know if I agree with saying that I approach it strictly from a theory perspective, okay. especially not today. Especially not today. Um, because if something sounds right, it sounds right. You yeah. know that. Yeah. You know, uh, or if it feels good. Yeah. Because something can sound bad but good at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, sometimes, you know, quite regularly, you just fucking things up for it to be, especially in rock and metal, because it's like... It's Fuck pain, the rules. It? If it's pop and that sort of stuff, fair enough. You've got... You can't go too far. Well, I'd say that, but yeah... We were listening to a bit of Billie Eilish every day. Okay. And there's one track where it literally just fades out. And as it's fading out, it is just like so much distortion over everything. Oh, really? To the point where it's just like... I don't listen to Eilish, so... I'll show you it a bit, man. It's like a really weird... You wouldn't naturally do that. Do you know what I mean? But in a creative way. Yes. Fuck yeah. Okay. And yeah. Because... This loops back to something I'd said, uh, I think the first year we ever did Metal to the Masses. Okay. And I was saying to Ian, Ian came and watched us at our final. So before he even joined the band, he was watching us and he was like, yeah. I really like the material, I like the band, blah, 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 you know. Um, so Ian was following us and when he, because I think initially he felt like a little bit uncomfortable approaching the band because he just went, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Which I was like, awesome. That's always the attitude to have. If you're yeah. in doubt, fucking throw down. Yep. Go. Right. Don't let fucking doubt stop you. Do something that you want to do. Just go do it. Yeah, always say um, yes. And Ian got the job. Figure it out later. <laughs> you know, Ian got the job. End of. Um, but it's like I said to Ian, I said, "Fuck the industry standard." Mm. Because how many industry standard bands do we see that are like these radio bands? They're boring as shit to watch. They're boring as shit to listen to. I'm not yeah. going to name these bands, but I'm just saying they are boring as fuck to watch live. As yeah. I did watch not too long ago, a very big band who had no fucking atmosphere live and they are really popular and I'm there like, how? Like, but that's just my opinion and my opinion isn't worth shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 it's one of those and I'm there just like, yeah, what you say, 
do things that aren't normal and it's metal man when did yeah. metal become let's follow this guideline metal by numbers one two that, three I you think know what that I mean? ties in really good with what you just said is you know for, for younger bands is creating a show creating something Atmosphere. worth people coming to come watch it because I've been there man I've seen bands that are boring as shit on stage yep. and it's just like look man if even good bands bands that I really like um but I've gone to see them live and it's like, well, I can listen to this at home and it sounds just as good, yeah. if not better. And if you're not going to entertain me while I'm here, then I don't know about you, but I'd rather be kicking back here with a beer. <laughs> yeah, comfort and of your own I'll have the Yeah, I'll have comforts. the same sort of experience. Do you know what I mean? I think... Put on a show, yeah. different story. And the weird, I think Nuno Betancourt brought this up to a point. It's like sometimes you don't need to be like energetic as shit on stage to put on a good performance live. It's There's more to it than just... What would Kid Rock say dancing around on the stage like a bunch of wounded ducks? Like, okay, fair enough. Some bands that really works for and it's part of the energy. It's like party atmosphere. That's awesome. It's kind of what we do. We do move around, especially with fucking Ian. That guy is like so yeah. energetic. It's unreal. Um, which really, and it works for us. Yes. But then Lane, um, I'm going to butcher his last name. Uh, this uh, Alison Chains with Lane, right? Okay. That guy would walk up to the mic, close his eyes and sing into that microphone 45 minutes and not move. Yeah. And the whole fucking crowd is gripped. Yep. But Gojira. Mm-hmm. I watched Gojira at the Motorport Arena uh, in Nottingham a couple of years ago, something like that, I think it was, 2022. Yeah. Um, yeah, my my date might be wrong. But Gojira aren't one of these bands that are going like, I mean, they move. Of course yeah. they move, but yeah, they're not yeah. moving like, they're not dancing around like a bunch of wounded ducks, but the yeah. atmosphere that they're creating, the show that they're putting on. Yep it transcends like yeah absolutely. it transcends the performance it's something fucking different you are creating an energy that you cannot get by listening to the album yeah and i think that's again something a lot of bands screw up for me i see a lot of bands moving around to the point where and they're trying to put on so much energy to the point where it takes Negatively away from effects. the actual performance the yeah. actual musical side yeah, vocalist, you can't headbang and sing, mate. Uh, that's not going to sound good. Uh, yeah, and same, Paramore, you know, Paramore proof that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you I, know mean, what I mean, she's a phenomenal vocalist. Unless you're going to wear a headset and you do a Phil Collins Britney Spears, or Britney Spears, let's be real, whatever. Britney Spears, fuck Phil Collins. Uh, yeah. yeah, baby, you can't yeah, just. It's see. just not going to look. And honestly, <laughs> I've seen. Yeah, when I talk to vocalists and and sort of bands and stuff that are about doing this stuff, I was like, sometimes you just got to be stood still absolutely rocking it and absolutely nailing it and that would be way more impressive than any fucking flip that you want to try and do on stage or whatever or running around jumping monitors or jumping behind drum kits raz fucking climbing barriers and shit keep it up but yeah raz is a really good example he's a fantastic frontman because sometimes he knows just when to rock it and then the other times he's jumping straight over the drummer's head off of a fucking number and you're like, whoa, where is this crazy bastard going now? Like, and it's finding that fine line between yeah. putting a show on but not taking away from the performance side. Yeah, it's still being able to deliver 110%. Like. So I'd bring it back to what you said at the very start of that, saying about young bands screwing it up. Is it screwing it up or is it just they're learning? It's learning, absolutely, yeah. They're pushing boundaries and figuring out what works and what doesn't. And I think for younger bands, uh, not being, yeah, a lot of bands don't record themselves live. They don't hear themselves playing unless it's in a studio or through a phone. And being able to hear yourselves back and see yourselves back, see your show, because you don't get to experience that. You have fucking no idea what's going on. (laughs) Yeah, if the drum is is kicking off back there or something happens the other side of the state, you have zero idea. So it's important to see it from the perspective that really matters. The audience. From, from the audience side. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So Kanye West says the biggest regret will be that he never gets to saw himself perform live. Like, Absolutely. Dude. But the thing is, it was Vaz that brought this up with me. He was like, he, he said that the, the, the one thing that he'd love to be able to do, which is impossible, is obviously watch himself perform just to see what yeah. it's like from the other side. Because yeah. yes, it is educational. And yes, you can. Because even watching things through, say, a well-recorded system, like you got a live good record. Like it's like watching live DVDs back. Yeah. Of like uh, di- uh, for me it was um, White Snake. So like live DVDs of White Snake, and then you don't realize that there's actually 
I did guitars that are added to that post. You got overdubs, yeah. Right, exactly. Right. Right. So yeah. it's even then, it's not true to performance. Yeah. Right. So, but to see from a, watch it from a performance side, like the only way that's going to happen is if I get a stand in on guitar and I stand in the audience and watch my stand in play with that band. And even then, it's only going to be 80% can say because I'm not up on that stage doing it. Yeah. 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 But then I could watch the other four do it. Yeah. But how are they going to react to this? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but I think, like you say, like to objectively look at it from an outside perspective is so difficult as a musician yeah. because you're so focused on your own soul performance, not just the band. Yeah. Like your guitar playing, your vocal, your singing, bass playing, guitar, drumming, it doesn't matter what it is. You are so focused within, like, you're trying to make sure that you're on point for the rest of the other people. Yeah. Because it's not just about you. Yeah. It's the rest of the band, yeah. the outfit, whatever it is. It doesn't matter how many people, it's Slipknot or... Man, it goes right the way white through. Snack, white, uh, white Stripes, two fucking people. Yeah. Right? I would love to meet someone that actually has a 100% accurate reading of an outside perspective on their own performance. Yeah. Well, I mean... Because it'd be educational. For someone like me, front of house. So I you're, the, you're the person that could turn around I, and be like, oh, I can yeah. fucking tell you. Because I, okay, I, maybe the lighting engineer might have a better view because he's constantly watching the show. However, oh, okay. sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in screens and flavored, fade of flipping or getting a beer. Nah, I don't, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I see the show. I hear the show. I yeah. see it from... Yeah, the depths of thousands of people. Yeah, and it's easy for me to pick up and see everything from a from an outsider point of view. So, like, you know, finding ways for younger bands to be able to get that perspective. Yeah, I think that's going to speed up that learning curve and be able to give them the opportunity to be like, "Oh, okay, that's what we're looking at. Ah, actually, that doesn't look good. That doesn't feel good. That's not getting me excited." If you can't feel excited by hearing back or seeing your show back. Yeah. Why? Why aren't you excited? Because yeah. if you're not excited, they're not going to be excited. Exactly. You know you've I mean? got to put in, you've got to get that crowd going. It's like, uh, and you'll hear band members that, um, of any band, doesn't matter. Yep. Um, that are particulars where they say, well, I feed off the audience. It's like, cool, but you have to feed that audience first. I always see it as this little bar, you know, like, you got the fair Star power, fucking guitar hero. I yeah, knew this was coming. kind of, man. <laughs> and yeah, going back to the whole thing about nerves, man. Yeah. Sometimes you can be like really rocking out a show. Everything's going really good. And something slight will go wrong. You feel the whole nerves of the whole, yeah, sometimes 30 of this crew just like, whoa, hang on, whoa. And you drop down a couple of levels, man. Yeah. And then you got to fight to refill that back yep. up, man. It's a uphill battle. Yeah, if you come on, I always say, how you come onto stage is so, so important. Yeah, being able to get that first perspective right, that first look and that energy to be like, woof, right. Yeah, come here with we the bank. go. Yeah, absolutely. Get them excited from the get go and you're usually winning. Yeah. yeah. Wow, if you come in poor and they, yeah, there were little things like members walking on stage to pray, press play on an intro when it just could have been done from side of stage instead. Yeah, just that little tiny thing where the lights dim down no one's on stage the intro, intro starts out of nowhere and boom the show has started Built the just that little difference creates 30% of the work for you yep do you know what I mean straight off the bat yeah and it's it's a really hard lesson to learn yeah it took me it's a big learning personally curve. a long time to learn it the um, thing is though it's um, I mean we've almost divulged into like the this is a like counselling session. Yeah, like. it's like the um, psycho <laughs> psychology of... Yeah, um, you but know, it's important, bands. I think. It's yeah, of course important. it's important. It's yeah. really important um, because there's loads of things that I wish I'd have took on board when I was younger that I didn't. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, 19-year-old me, you go... Okay, 19, I wasn't gigging, but still. Yeah. Like, you know... Um, to be honest, a lot of the people watching this video will be those sort of people. Well, like, hopefully. Yeah, well, I know a lot of them do yeah they're they're always messaging asking questions they're Sound. quite active on the channel and yeah i try and help them out and this is kind of what this is all about is being able to bring lots of different people from different backgrounds and cover like a majority of sort of different things 
So, yeah, it's, I've always said it's, I've been lucky because of what I do to be able to see so much from different backgrounds. Yeah. While with being in a band or just a set crew, you're only exposed to you know, a certain level. And you, you focus very much on your unit. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what happens with other bands and other tours and other festivals and stuff isn't really a concern and you haven't really got time to I mean, I mean, care. I, mean, I will say, to be fair though, um, Dave, our vocalist, he's very much like that though. Right. He does really look at like other bands and festivals That's and good. gigs. He's really conscious yeah. about the scene and he's all about the love. Yeah. Like um, one of the... Uh, and I will fucking state it. He's one of the nicest dudes in metal I've ever met. Yeah, he's I always up there remember with Dave. He Dave was like, is like, he's the same on stage. He's never scary as shit. He's not. And though. then he'd come up after. He's, not he's though, like a man. massive he, he's, teddy bear. He's a massive like, teddy bear. Yeah, he just he loves. Lovely. Like he wants to meet you. He wants to mm. say hello. You know, he's a black country lad through and through. Like most of the lads are. You know, there's only like, I mean, Kidderminster's has got a DY fucking Dudley Borough postcode I suppose so it's one of those lads yeah, like, oh yeah so you're black country I'm like there's a lot of black country yeah, lads I would say I was black country though yeah so it is what it is and then kind uh, of black country but not black, black country, country enough to black have country, one of the black country flags you know, a little bit black country yeah. but like you go outside of fucking Birmingham area like oh yeah you like black country boys or Birmingham way and I'm there it's like I'll behave yeah like yeah yeah yeah, yeah I just say are. I'm black country more than Birmingham to, to to, mate tell <laughs> someone that you're from Kidderminster and they're just like where and I'm like yeah don't worry about it you're from Kiddy look we're in a field yeah, we're in a field. We're in a field. <laughs> where do you live? Uh, I live in a field. In a our, place closest, our closest neighbour is Sean the fucking sheep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I don't believe you. Uh, no, seriously, I do, mate. It's just like an hour outside of Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You have to just generalise. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. It's like we bumped into um, uh, fucking uh, the bass player from Megadeth. Oh, nice, David, David Ellison backstage before okay. we went on stage. That's pretty cool. And um, Dave and Luke, uh, our drummer. So the vocalist and the drummer were shitting themselves because this is right. the first blood slot they played. I think Inky was a little bit nervous, but he was fucking ready. And I was there just like, well, that's the difference between nerves and adrenaline. He's yeah. fucking ready. Watton was kind of shitting it um, to the point where, and uh, this is an exclusive, no one knows about this because it was uh, one of those. But like I said, I main, I try to contain and maintain myself as best as I possibly can so I can right. regulate myself to a degree. Yeah. It's when I'm playing, if I fuck up or here and there, it's like I have little slips and then bring it back up. Like yep. you say, it's harder to bring it back than it is to lose it. Yeah. But what in the, the drum techs were setting up his stuff and he was just pacing and he was on stage. He turned and looked at me and he had tears in his eyes. And I was there, just went, get on your kit, sit on your stool. Yeah. Because that's his comfy place. Yep. But he's a yeah, drummer. Yeah, yeah. His comfy place is on his throne. He's got a nice little backrest with him. Drummer needs a seat. You know, he needs yeah. a seat, man. And he was just like, okay. So it was like, he was almost looking for like direction to a degree. Yeah. The lad knows what he's got to do. Leave him to do what he's fucking going to do. Yeah. Like, he's a good drummer. He's, he hits like, his nickname is The Nuke for a reason. The guy yeah. hits hard. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right. So I was there like, like you know, I, I was like retired from music. Yeah. So, and then he was like, you want to start a band? I went, yeah, you're literally one of the five drummers on my shortlist that I wanted to work with. So yeah, you're the, if Reese was asking, are we going to get back on stage? You're like, it's been three years. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm yeah. done. I am done. I kept all my gear because I didn't want to sell yeah. it because it's sentimental. Yeah. But it was a case of like, well, you never know. Yeah. Never say never, man. And then it was a case of like, he goes, I've already got a full band if we need it. I'm like, he's like, I just need another guitarist. I was like, I've got a guy. Yeah. Okay, right. So started. yeah, that's so that's how that all well. started. That's pretty cool, man. But um, and the only guy that I didn't know in the band was Inky, right? And straight up, again, uh, you'll meet Inky at some point, right? Well, you've already met him at Bloodstock, oh, but Bloodstock. I mean, in, yeah, a, in, a, in a in a in a more yeah. in depth fashion. Yeah, sit down and have a chat. Again, one of the nicest guys ever. Yeah. Um, to which is it, it's actually, I think there's been like a bit of a running theme especially with some of the interviews that we had at Bloodstock, like Sherry Buscemi, for example, she's lovely. And she was there like, you're one of the nicest bands I've ever met. Like, you're yeah. such lovely lads. And I'm like, that doesn't apply to me, but the rest of the lads, because I'm the cock, right? Yeah. So I'm the guy that says, no, don't be a dickhead. <laughs> me right? too. You, you need the old guy that says, yo, manage expectations, yep. reality checks, like ego Calm check, fucking, you know. Fuck down. Yeah, just, yep. yeah, fucking lads, just, yeah. You know, yeah, like, pipe it. you need, you can't have five lunatics. Yeah. You need the one guy to go like, lads, we've got practice tomorrow. Yeah. Or we've got, you know, this what this is what, you know, it's one of them. But I mean, uh, dad also keeps us in check every now and then. But he's also, yeah. again, one of the happiest guys ever. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when you're a touring band, you're on a bus and it's fine. You can have as many lunatics on a bus as you want. 
as long as someone's <laughs> driving. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly right. That's, so you're not, getting, you're not making the next show. That's exactly what being in a band is. You've yeah. got to have one guy that's like, okay, cool. I got this. Yeah. Come on. And so, then maybe a backup guy. Yeah. That's me and Ian. Things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Ian's all about non-alcoholic beer. Yeah. Like sober as possible. I mean, I'm, this is probably the most I've drank since Bloodstock. Yeah. And um, yeah. Big I mean, Desperados, I, I sponsors. Yeah. Collar. We all drink it up here. We've been drinking this for 10 years at this studio. Yeah, yeah, man. Just saying. Yeah, do it. You've had your money's worth. Cry, so I'll put us in touch, please. It'll make a lot of happy I mean, musicians. if we could bypass the government's tax on it, then sad. Yeah, well, don't, don't say that on camera. <laughs> no, Fuck them. So, <laughs> yeah, band van. So what have you guys actually got coming up then? Oh, okay, sound. sounds. Um, yeah. Oh, shit, that's close. Um, we've got, um, we've got a new release coming out, uh, 1st of September, it's Paralysis. Cool. Uh, which is really cool because at Bloodstock, people are actually singing the lyrics. Nice. And, and it's not even been officially released yet. So it's people that have come and watched us That's at shows cool, elsewhere. Man. So yeah, people yeah. actually came to see us at Bloodstock, not just people that we never met at Bloodstock, which we also right. want to see. But, yeah. Um, yeah, Paralysis is being released with a music video, uh, 1st of September. Okay. Uh, we've also got new T-shirts, which is the Pariah T-shirt. That got released uh, not too long ago. Nice. Uh, these are up for sale. We only do limited runs. We don't right. do big batches. Where can we find these? Oh, sorry. Where can we find them? Uh, we are, I believe we have a band can set up. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll find it on there if you type in Kensai. Uh, Ian's the one that's in charge of that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, he's sorting it all out. So in social media, um, be your gigs as well, right? Uh, the what, sorry? Will it be at the gigs? Oh, of course it will be. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. cool. uh, the incentive is, because if you buy it online, it's going to be, T-shirt plus shipping. Okay. Well, obviously yep. you come to a gig. You don't pay shipping. It's cheaper. So come yep. see us. And if you're really nice and that's nicely, they might even sign it. I mean, if you want us to fucking sign it, you don't even... Of course people like, do, man. <laughs> I just sign shit, man. I mean, we're also... Um, we, we, we we make like uh, key rings and we had some patches, which is a shame I didn't bring any up, actually. Um, but like, we were giving those out at Bloodstock. They were freebies. Nice. So if you didn't come and see us at Bloodstock, you didn't get your freebies, man. Because we give out... You know, we're, we're a loving band. We're all... You know, we give to the audience even when it doesn't. You know, it will cost us, but then it will cost you. Yeah, that's so, cool. You do stuff like that, man. Yeah, and we, like you said, gave it to David Evans. So it was like, yeah, I have a couple of patches, man. Like, yeah. It was one of them. It cost yeah, us, yeah, man. But, you know, X amount of money or whatever to yeah. produce them and then just give them out. That's but, it. Um, like gig wise, what you got coming up? Man? Uh, so this is the thing. I'm not the gig guy. Oh, okay. I apologise. Like, okay. So in terms of you're gigs, a, it's you're like. You're a diary guy, right? I'm Same the. Me. Okay. So when it comes to the band, I'm like the writer and I'm the tech. Right. So I sort out. Ian's Evertunes and Inky's Bases. And we might do another video on that, like because we do a lot of guitar stuff, and your guitar nerdy. That might be a I'm really good video to do. A yeah. rise, actually. I mean, all of the, you know. Um, yeah. Oh, so yeah. You're obviously not a sound guy. <laughs> no, no, I'm a guitar tech, so I'm not a yeah. sound guy per se. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, we spoke about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, have no, been over this, funny. and uh, many jokes at my expense, which is absolutely <laughs> fucking valid. So. um I'll probably fuck the levels now, but yeah, that's good. Uh, that's not good. If I was a bit, I mean, it'd be right. like no, your dude, it's gone dead. It, yeah, he's dead took the XLR out of the bell end. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, gigs, gigs, gigs. Um, you can find it all on your social media, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the best place is obviously to check out like our Facebook, our Instagram. Um, that's a place to get all the events um, you got on TikTok, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, we are building the TikTok. There so go, the TikTok is TikTok. up. The TikTok is that. up, um, but it is early days for TikTok. Cool, man. Um, as, you know, I'm in my 30s and the second youngest member in the band. Um, we're old yep, to too. a lot of people. And yeah. TikTok is like a new kid thing. Yep. So, right, yeah, um, yeah. but it's really effective. Yeah, it's cool. It's a really good um, platform. What else? What else are we doing? Um, obviously, we are looking to go back into the studio. Cool. Uh, even though uh, we've got... So, Paralysis has obviously been released the 1st of September, but then we've got another track to drop. And we haven't got an official release date for that. Okay. But Nadachi... Nadachi's also going to drop. That's quite bouncy. Cool. It's got quite a bouncy riff. I'm pretty so, sure you've heard it before, because you get sneak previews on my Yeah, show. I do. I get a lot of sneak previews. I had, yeah, like, three did. yesterday. Oh, I had some sneak previews yeah, coming up here with, like, yeah. you know, Black Hours and stuff. Like, yeah. You know, and, uh... Yeah, like I spoke to Ant about it, and I was like, oh, "Dude, I love that album." Yeah, they're hopefully getting them in towards dude, the end of the year. Stellar work on that fucking album, honestly. Thank you, man. I actually yeah. um, got an email from James Hetfield about that one. I remember you saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah." I couldn't fucking believe it, man. I told the band, and they were like, "Holy fuck, what?" It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but the like, thing yeah, is nice. that, that there's going to be so much to Ant and the boys. Yeah, yeah, it did, man. You know, especially what I mean? Ant. Ant is like '80s guy. 
like Maiden, Love Them to Bits, Mate. absolute legend, right there with him. Again. And how good is his fucking Ant's vocals, especially new wave vocals? Dude. Yeah, like, man. Come on. Yeah, it, you know what? All of them. And uh, yeah, Joe is a, a wicked drummer. And yep. I've got to say, you know, Connor, um, they had some problems, we'll say that, with their bassist. Right as we started recording the album. He's another way um, with bassist, so. I mean, bassist and drummers, man, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, whatever. But, uh, you know, between me and Connor, we figured out all the bass for the whole album. He did a lot. Uh, they got on a bassist now. We shot the music video and they're going out gigging with him now. But, yeah, that was the big boots for Connor to fill. And he'd never played bass before. He'd, yeah, the first time he picked up a bass was up here pretty much. And he absolutely nailed it. That, that whole album was so much fun to do. And the, the end results is really good. They're off touring it now and doing some shows and stuff. And it's got some really good feedback. And, yeah, James Hatfield likes it, so... When literally, you know, Papa Hetfield yeah, is saying that this is that. sick, sit down, drink a beer, and have yep. a good night. Yeah, like you've yeah. deserved it. I definitely had a beer on that one. But I yeah, bet you cool. fucking did. But yeah, man. more than one. Kenze, new music. You got shows Ooh. coming up, merch. Uh, yeah, so merch, obviously. Um, uh, typically, how we run with merch is we do limited runs. We don't do like bulk batches of like. So you gotta get in there quick. You gotta yeah. grab it. Yeah, grab it. Like, like we've got very few of like the second. All our first batch are sold out. Second batch is literally like less than five. Yeah. Um, this new batch, we've still got quite a number because it's, but it was just before Bloodstock we got it. Yeah. We haven't. We didn't announce them, so you can say this is the official announcement that we have yeah. t-shirts for Exclusive. sale. We um, but we did sell some before we went to Bloodstock. Nice. Um, it's one of them, they're 15 quid, like if you come to cool. a show. Um, we try to keep things reasonably priced as much as possible. Definitely, man. Um, uh, because, I mean, it's what Dave's all about, trying to give back to people that come and see us, that pay. Absolutely, yeah. How much, eight, eight, nine, ten, twelve quid to come to a show. It's just like, well, it's you know, we don't want to it. charge you 30 quid for a fucking T-shirt. Yeah. Let's get you you know what I mean? It's like, if we can cut cost a little bit, cut profit a little bit to give back let's do it yeah like and yeah. even then we had the freebies like the key rings we were like there's a free key ring fucking have it like, yeah. you know what I mean um, it costs us but it's nice to give to people that actually give a shit about us and yeah. or even people that are new to meeting us and are just like oh okay they're nice guys they give me a f- yeah. free whatever it, it all goes a long way you I, mean, I mean you guys seem yeah I've only met some of the guys briefly at Bloodstock the other day but you seem like a very genuine yeah, a bunch of guys, and yeah, you're going down on the local scene a storm. You're impressing the right people, and yeah, no, thank you. I hope that everything just keeps on climbing for you guys. And but we, we we're gonna push. We're gonna see what happens. I mean, like I'm the guy that's very much like. Uh, <laughs> I think the the term was negative Nancy at one point right, because okay. I'm the guy like that's that. almost like uh, manage expectations to a degree. Like, it's, okay, you know, it's cool to have that enthusiasm, yeah, man. but like. The lads want to keep pushing, and I'm like, that's fucking great. Yeah. And I'm not going to knock them on it yeah. at all. And I'm there just like, they're like, it'll work. And I'm like, it's got every chance to work as much as it's got every chance to fail. Yeah. Just remember that. Don't get hurt. Like, if if if, if it doesn't work out for you, we still keep pushing. Yeah. And that's the fun of it, man. That's, that's it. the joy of being in a band. Yeah. It's it's the woodshedding. It's the grind. We all do it because we like doing it. We're here for the passion of music. And a lot of it, I mean... The, <laughs> the approach of like meeting new people and making new friends yeah. is and being part of a community definitely man. is I think some people miss out on it or they miss the point of it yeah but we're all supposed to work together and that brings us nicely round to where we started man Metal to Masses new band what's really important is just working together working with your band working with the local scene local yep. promoters a good team around you and Honestly, if everything's positive, everybody's hard working, everybody's in it for the right reasons, it's the most amazing experience you can ever have. Like, yeah, it's, it's like the dysfunctional yeah. family that you get to choose. There we go, man. There we go. <laughs> New band. Dude, That's it. thank you for coming on, man. man much respect, wicked. as always, man. You're a legend. And, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, we've got a few other guests coming on next couple of weeks. Uh, keep your eye out on the socials. As usual, if there's any questions, drop us uh, a message, drop us a comment down below. Go check out Kenzai. Thank you. Go buy some merch. It's a limited edition, so it's really not hanging around. Yeah. So you've got to be fucking quick, man. Yeah, because once we make a t-shirt, we don't make it again. There we go, man. They're strict as fuck yet. So 
catch it while it's hot, man. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.